But leading off on the lean process update is Kelly Cochran. Sorry, Linda. There we go. Hi, go everybody. Ahead, Mr. Linda DeBolt from Public Works. I'm going to do a, a couple of short um, introductory comments before handing it over to Kelly. And I, I would just like to um, say a few things as one of the several um, sponsors of this effort um, about the, um, the, the success of the process and the learnings that the team did. So as, as, uh, as we got going into this uh, learning opportunity to learn the lean process and apply it to a, a very significant and major need, um, that is improving the commercial permitting process, um, three of the, the main things that, I, that I'm sure that you'll um, realize as you listen to the presentation is that we, we had an opportunity to learn a great set of tools um, to improve how we do business in the city of Redmond. Part of that was um, really taking the time to listen to our customer and, 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 and understand what their needs are. As we look at into the detail of how we do commercial permitting, marrying together the learnings from what our customers said and the, um, you know, the, the devils are in the details on how we actually improve our process um, was a fascinating and uh, um, I think a uh, great op learning opportunity on how we can do this, not only for this particular process, but how we can do that for future work um, in, in other areas of the city. Um, the team did a, a great job. It was a, a great deal of hard work. Um, we learned how to work interdepartmentally and understand each other's pieces of this process, which you'll see. Uh, another big learning is, is, is really how to um, um, work together in, in solving problems with the creativity um, and innovation. So with that, I, I, I hope that you'll enjoy this. Um, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing um, the video that's been produced. And I'll turn this over now to Kelly, who will kind of introduce the, um, the presentation. Hi, so we are here tonight to provide you with a final report on the lean process for commercial permitting. Uh, this is a process that kicked off in March and all of the implementation items went live in October. Needless to say, there was a lot of work that was done in between and we have three representatives from the team that are here tonight to walk you through um, what was done, how we did it, what's been achieved, what we learned um, as far as our team experience with Lean, as well as what kind of feedback we've received from our customers. At the end, we will um, discuss the next steps for using Lean in the city, and that will be a discussion led by Larissa Benson from the University of Washington. We would then like to answer any questions that you have, listen to any comments, but do feel free during the presentation to please speak up if there's something that you'd like to discuss on a slide. So tonight we have Kurt Seaman, Carol Lewis, and Rich Gieske. And we are going to start with Kurt, who will be um, kind of refreshing you on the lean process, why we did it, and how this tool was used by this team. Thanks, Kelly. Uh, my name is Kurt Seaman. I work in development review, reviewing uh, mostly the transportation elements of development. So we're all very happy to be here and share with you what we've been doing, as Kelly said. And I think we've got a lot of good information to share. So. Uh, I'm going to start us off here. So um, back in mid-March, we got together and asked ourselves, first of all, why we, what was needed here improvement-wise. So the good news for the Redmond was we were, we were recovering from an economic downturn. Things were really getting a lot busier in development. Um, so that was good. Um, the challenges were we had less staff actually than before the downturn, and uh, but we had more work than ever. Permits were starting to back up, and I think both from an internal staff, there was uh, staff feeling a bit overwhelmed, and certainly um, we were starting to hear from our customers, from developers, that they were frustrated by the process. Uh, as as Chief Smith, I think is I think. I think the chief said this uh, is a so one redman came to us and and expressed their frustration as the chief says the good part about people f um, expressing frustration to you is that can you can take that as a gift the information is really helpful 
uh, if you take it that way. So uh, rather than get defensive about it, we took it as a gift and we went to work on it. So uh, let me talk a little bit now about what Lean is all about. Um, so Taichi Ono, who's the founder of Toyota Production Systems in Japan, his definition of lean is to remove non-value added waste of a process. So um, it's not to reduce um, quality, but it's to take out the, again, the non-value added waste. And uh, so the way we approach this was, you know, asking the questions, can we do more? Can we maintain quality or even increase quality? Can we produce satisfied customers and have a uh, happier staff here at the city? So those were sort of our guiding principles here. And how we went to work on that was something called a Kaizen, which you can see the Japanese characters over there. It comes from two Japanese words, Kai and Zen, meaning basically good change. Uh, and in our case, the Kaizen was basically a one week, very intense workshop. Uh, we met from eight to five every day in a, in a, in a room, uh, just the team, and really devoted full effort to, uh, to working through this, through, through this effort. So um, again, with the, the whole idea of reducing the non-value added waste. So here's our team. Good looking group of folks there. Uh, so the team, I think what's really cool about the team was it, it's, it represented nine separate groups here at the city that all were involved in development review. So it was a very cross departmental team. Um, another great thing about the team, it was actually the people that do the development review at the city. So it wasn't a team of managers, it wasn't a team of supervisors, it was the actual development review staff coming together to figure out how we could eliminate uh, waste from what we do. Um, in addition to the team, we had sp uh, project sponsors. The, the key sponsors were uh, three of the directors, Rob Ull from planning, um, Linda DeBolt from public works, and Chief Smith from, from fire. So those were the sort of the three key sponsors. In addition, we had four managers, Jason, Jason Lynch, Todd Short, Paulette Norman, and Mike Paul, who are all managers involved in the development review process. Um, couldn't have done it without Larissa, who's our facilitator, taught us all a great deal about, led us through the lean process, and, and Kelly, of course, was always there to help make sure that we had everything that we needed. So like the uh, internal staff team, we also had a customer team. And this customer team was actually, uh, again, it's a good cross-section representation of, I think, owners, designers, builders, um, land use attorney. Uh, this was a group suggested to us by One Redmond. Um, and again, as I mentioned earlier, I think we took this as a gift, it was, it, as an opportunity to listen to what all of these folks had to say and, and, and um, try to apply their concerns to our process. So here we are, the Kaizen, the, uh, the, the one week workshop. And this was really the, the intense kickoff for our, our lean process. So we did a couple things in Kaizen. The first thing we did was listen to our customers. They all got, came into the um, council conference room across the way here and told us what they were seeing as challenges in our process. Um, the next thing that was really kind of phenomenal was we documented our current steps, which I don't know, you fully can uh, get a feel for, for that on the board. There's, that's actually outside the, the red brick room, which is where we met. That actually, that's the wall outside the rec, red brick room. The whole entire red brick room was also covered with post-its and process. I think we counted, how many was it, Carol? Uh, 1,253 steps so that's in a, <laughs> three years of time. So that's a lot of steps, right? So, um, so it was a little overwhelming at first, but, but the process, again, in the Kaizen was to identify where are the bottlenecks, what's the waste, and um, so we went to work on that. We also um, 
kept in touch with our customers throughout this workshop, throughout this week. So we went back to them several times along the way to make sure we were um, addressing their concerns that we were getting it right. So, uh, and as we'll talk about a little bit later, kind of the great thing about the whole Kaizen, about the whole lean process is it's not a, it's not a process sort of uh, just to do a process. It's, it's really about the implementation and putting it to work. Uh, Mr. Stellan. So the, the one thing that hits me, was there anybody on the team that knew the whole process before it got up on the wall? Or was that sort of a moment of discovery that you actually, as a team for the first time, saw the process? Because it, it, it strikes me as that the best thing about this is now you have people that know the process, and once you know it, you can improve it. So did anybody know it before it right. started so I, out? It, I think we all knew our, again, as I, as I said, there's sort of nine different people coming from, coming at the process from nine different aspects, so we knew our part of it. I don't know, I'll let Rich and uh, Carol talk to your question as well, but I, I think my sense was that we were generally very surprised and very overwhelmed that it really I don't think that anyone would have guessed that it was that actually this many steps from from when you first come in looking to with an idea for a project to when you walk out of the door with occupancy so there were several of us that could kind of give you an idea of the process but not each individual 1253 steps through the process there is not one person out of the nine divisions that could tell you every single step all the way from beginning to end do you think now somebody could pretty much, I, I'm not saying all 12,000 steps are, mm -hmm. but do you think now the team pretty much knows the process through from from this? Okay, great. We do. Rich? Well, I was going to say one of, one of the important things is before we want to implement any kind of solution is really define what the problem is. Where is that waste? Where are those areas that you can take a, take a chance to improve? Uh, and what is a good improvement? How does that affect the overall system? And that's really what we lacked, you know, with a lot of, uh, like Kurt said, as we lost a lot of staff at, during the recession, the downturn, a lot of retirement of older staff, senior managers, those sorts of folks that kind of knew this stuff, built this stuff. Uh, we did, some of that institutional knowledge went away. And this process, I think, really clarified that we didn't really replace that knowledge. We were lacking some knowledge. So it did provide a lot of clarity, I think, for the team and kind of an aha moment of there is a lot of waste that we can remove without sacrificing the quality of the product we're trying to deliver and still meet our customers' needs. So, very enlightening process. So let's talk a little bit about what, the cus what we heard from the customer. So, um, I've heard this for, for a while, and I think others, it was not necessarily a surprise to, to many of us on the team, but, but really developers are looking for three things. They're looking for certain certainty and predictability, which are sort of related. And both of those, I think, go to the point of no surprises from, from really from the time you first come in talking about a project till the time you, you walk out the door. I think developers understand that there's process involved. They understand that there's codes and regulations, but they want to know about those early on and they want to have some certainty that those are going to stay be the same regulations we apply throughout the process so so those are that's two parts I think most developer most all developers are looking for the third one is um, sort of runs a little bit counter to the first two and that's flexibility and I think the point there is especially in Redmond now a lot of the a lot of the easier sites to build on have been built on so the the sites that are left uh, the just uh, sort of mindlessly applying codes and regulations to the project don't really get the project, don't get what we want from the city standpoint and may not meet the needs of the developer either. So, you know, how do we, um, how can we be creative and innovative and, and uh, sort of look at sites in a, in a, in a way that's, uh, that's flexible but still meets the, the desire, the, the vision of the city. So, um, so I think the challenges that, the, that we heard from the customer was, um, first of all, and this is sort of a, was a, a, a new thing I think for us, can, can our process more closely follow their process? So their process uh, is, follows more of a design build model, sort of let's, 
make some decisions, let's move forward with that, make some more decisions, and uh, sort of throughout the process to the end. So is there a way that our process can match, the city's review process can match that a bit more closely? Um, I think another thing, back to the certainty and predictability element, is there, can we be clear and predictable and consistent with our fees and what our application process looks like from the very start. Cost is a big thing, obviously, to developers, and they want to, many developments need to know the costs are, are sort of a make or break thing early on, so can they get an idea of what those costs are and can they depend on the, that those are gonna be the costs? And then I think internally, can we, you know, can we coordinate more effectively with, a, again, our nine teams? Can we work uh, closely together and make sure that we're all telling everyone the same story. So that led to some questions we asked ourselves. We heard that the, um, so what did the customers actually tell us about the process? We heard um, that there were a lot from the 1,253 steps. Certainly some of those must be wasted, right? So are, what, what are those wasted steps? Um, sort of a general confusion about the process. One of the words we heard a lot was sort of a swirling, which is not a not a positive word in this case, sort of getting lost in that confusion of the 1,200 steps. So um, this idea of certainty, length of time, total cost, that was a big, big thing we heard. And then sort of back to the design build um, model that a lot of developers use, um, what does the city need to review a project and when in the process do they need it? So um, again, the common theme throughout this lean process, it's really very simple in a way, is, is removing the non-value added waste, but yet not reducing the quality of the outcome. So 1,253 steps, that was a huge overwhelming process. We, we thought about the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, but could we, the idea is could we focus on, you know, could we pare this down? We only had a week. Could we, could, could we get to maybe the, f the three or four main areas where we could really get the biggest bang for the buck? And we started with, tw I think, 23, 23. 23 ideas. We whittled those down to three, really, with sort of an add-on here. But this first one is what we call customer transparency. And what that's all about is, um, a couple areas we heard uh, clearly that were um, a problem for for folks for developers is our website was really kind of jumbled and not very accessible and hard to find your way around in so is there a way to make a, a, a cleaner easier to access uh, website and then again back to this idea of costs and fees is there a way that could we give folks a, a like a you know, sort of the model we talked about early on was when you're buying a car online, you can go through, you can add all the options, and then at the bottom of the page, you get a printout of what that car is going to cost you, and you can count on that number as being pretty close to what you're going to pay. Can we make, can we do that same kind of thing for a developer? So, um, so that was one thing, the customer transparency with fees and the website. Um, the next thing we, we sort of focused on was the whole development review process in, in, along with the building permit process. The way we've treated that is land use and building permits were two kind of sort of almost completely separate things. Because we had all of the people that work on the process from beginning to end, we, we, fig we found some ways to tie those together um, more closely, so again, reducing confusion both internally and for the customer. And then uh, this deviation process has never been a very sort of the add-on thing that came out of this. It's not really very clear about what you needed to do if you didn't meet standards. So this gets to the idea of flexibility and how we handle um, requests to do something different from exactly what's in our code. So, uh, so from that, um, we started to make really good progress. And this was really, I think for me, the most exciting part of Lean, uh, as I've mentioned, it wasn't just this week-long exercise. In fact, the week-long exercise was really just the start. And that's when we really started to work on things from going from these areas of frustration, both internal and external, to actually coming out with something that we could all 
that was more workable for everybody. So um, we focused on those four areas, as I mentioned, in the week, and then out of that we developed an implementation plan, started tracking our progress. We've met monthly or more often than that, weekly on some of these issues uh, since March. Uh, all the way through this, I think we've worked to get customer feedback to see if we're on the on the right track or to confirm that we're on the right track. And um, the outcome of all that is some, some really great results, which uh, Carol is going to share with you. But before she does that, we're going to show you this really cool video. It's just a few minutes. I think it's four or five minutes, maybe. Well, before the process, Redmond did have a reputation out there within the development community as being a difficult place to do business, both in the the cost of doing business and also the unpredictability. I knew customer service was an issue in the development review process and I wanted to make the process better for our employees so they could do their job more efficiently and also for the development community so they can do their job more easily. One Redmond's uh, primary mission in life is to attract jobs and investment and to make this a very livable community and I think what was underappreciated is that jobs and, and capital investment flow to those opportunities in which is most efficient and the experience of the business community and the experience of our investors was that uh, both the time frames and the predictability um, were not uh, conducive to attracting that investment. Adding staff wasn't an option. We have very limited resources, we're coming out of a recession, so instead of adding resources we had to create more capacity and this is where Lean came in. I was at a conference and sat in on a Toyota session of how they use Lean. And I thought this is the right process for us to make development review more efficient without adding resources so both sides can do their job more efficiently. Lean is a tool that is used for process improvement. It's a set of practices and principles that's used to help focus on the elimination of waste and non-value added activities. The directors from planning, public works, and the fire chief put together a team of staff that had a working knowledge of the commercial permitting process. We were facilitated by an outside consultant and supported throughout the process by representatives from the development community. And it all started by locking ourselves in a room for one week. After the team documented each step of the process, we identified what our major pain points were and decided on improvements that would be best suited to increase the capacity within our process, the quality of our work, the level of customer satisfaction, and employee morale. Uh, from there, we went back to our customers and confirmed that these improvements would also meet their needs. We heard from our customers that the process was just too confusing and we needed to give them some clarity on things like permits, plans, and requirements. The biggest thing we heard from our customers is our website was confusing. And so what we did is we redesigned it in three sections so the customers who have experience can go to one section, the customers that need more assistance who haven't done work in Redmond can go to a second section, and then the third section is for tools and resources and how to contact city staff members on specific projects. We also worked on the prep process, which allows customers to begin the process earlier and get through the process in a predictable and complete timeline. So we heard from our customers that they don't like to get hit with surprising fees. And what they wanted was clear and accurate information to clearly calculate their project from beginning to end. So what we did is we developed a, uh, a fee estimator for our customers. It's a online tool that our customers can use to um, come up with their project cost. What it will do is it's going to ask you a series of questions and as you're going through those questions it's going to populate what those fees are. Um, it'll also let you know when those fees are due throughout the project and, um, and also it allows you to have the opportunity to change things based on um, your, the impacts that it has to your projects. Again, it's just a very easy, user-friendly tool um, for our customers. What we learned is that we need to provide more accurate, consistent, and reliable information to our customers so that they receive the certainty they need uh, to move forward with their project. We also learned that we need to 
redefine and or define some of our processes so that the level of coordination between departments is improved. We did a few things. We empowered staff so they're able to make decisions on issues related to project review. We restructured some of our review processes so they're more streamlined. And we trained staff so we're all on the same page and providing a consistent message to our customers at the counter. I think we came away with the understanding that it, it really is truly an intense process. It's a lot of work. Uh, but that work is really necessary in order to understand the big picture and have a deep understanding of what it is we do and why we do it. Um, it also gave us the, the, the power to ask for changes in how we do things and remove those things from our work day that don't add value to the customer and provide some assurance to our sponsors and our supervisors that we truly understand what it is we're trying to achieve within the organization and here's a more efficient way to do it. Well, we were very impressed by the process, um, both from being invited in early on to help identify the points that needed to be addressed, uh, to being there to serve as the uh, voice of the client, um, and I think we were very impressed with the outcome um, and the commitment of the city and city staff towards improving the uh, permit process efficiency. There are many things that impressed me about the lean process. I like how it brought employees together to work collaboratively to solve problems. I like that we understood customer service better because we listened to our customers. Customer service wasn't cutting corners and lowering our standards. Customer service was keeping our standards high but doing things more efficiently. This helped employees do their job more easily. This helped developers have predictability. And together, we're building a great Redmond. I'm Carol Lewis. Um, I got to be one of the participants in the lean process in the Kaizen week, and I got to participate in the small group of the building permit review. I work in the development services department. That's one of my changes. Um, I used to always introduce myself as someone who worked at the building department or the building division. Since um, the lean process, I've started introducing myself as someone who works in the development services. One city and one vision, one department philosophy. Um, that's a pretty amazing video, I think, in my opinion, that Chip created for the team so we can have a snippet of a way to show people the work that we did and the information we got out of it. The three things that are really easy to measure or clear to measure that are results that have come out of the lean process in the commercial permit process is um, a reduction in building permit time, 58%. Um, how we reduce that is we got building review beginning during the civil review. So we've pushed up the review process into the civil review. So we start earlier. There's less delay time. Um, the second thing we did is the prep process. We reduced the lead time, 57%. And we did that by showing clear timelines. So people cannot get into the prep process and not know how to get out. Now we give them clear, defined timelines and examples of how to get in and how to get out so they know how to get it finished. Um, the last thing we did, and this is one big one on me, um, we, we only accept now 100% complete applications. Um, we've done some staff training and we realized as a team that accepting almost complete submittals is not a good use of our applicants' time or our time. What it ends up doing is making longer review cycles and costing the applicant more money later on, giving us additional information during the process. So we don't do that anymore. Um, we also updated our checklist and provided a clear, detailed system for applicants to come in ahead of time and find out exactly what they need for exactly each submittal. So there's no question about what's required when they come in for their permit submittal and prep submittal. Um, no plan review quality was changed during this process. All we fixed is the lead times and the waiting time. So the quality of plan review didn't change. So the achievements that we were successful at doing during this process is um, streamlining the process, developing tools for staff and customers alike, and increasing staff collaboration. And that one seems really simple, but I'll explain how difficult that one can be as we go through this. 
So streamlining the permit process. We did this by updating checklists and requirements for customers so staff and customers knew what to expect through the process. We changed our design to a design build. We used to be a design bid build process where there was a lot of delay for the customers in between the designing of the building and actually the construction. We reduce that timeline so they can do the steps more streamlined without the wasted time in between. And that meets the current state of the economy as you can see in the downtown in the video. All of that work was in the downtown zone and Overlake zone. So we're doing a lot of construction in those areas. Um, we reduce the redo works or redo loops is what they kind of call it. So the circle, people were getting into the prep process and not quite knowing when could they get out, when could they submit for their formal um, site plan entitlement submittal versus having the discussion and learning what they needed to do. So we worked on that. Um, we, we did work on the 1,253 steps, and I kind of joke a lot. Um, that picture you saw on the Kynzan slide was the building permit process outside of the room. I kept laughing because I felt like building is always at the end of the process. I kept saying, yeah, now you guys kicked me out of the room. I'm not always last, but you kicked me out of the room on top of it. So it's kind of funny. Right, Fire, fire's always after, but my CVOs are at the end. Um, <laughs> So the next thing we worked on is the website redesign. Um, so we started this one and I thought, oh yeah, this is gonna be an easy thing. This was not easy. <laughs> um, every division worked on this on a weekly basis. Terry Marprit, he is just a gem. He led us through it. Even all the bickering and trying to get everything organized and on one page was pretty impressive. He did an amazing job. Karen and Checho designed it in a very fast, efficient manner. After we got our information in one place, it was pretty amazing. The reason we did this is because customers kept saying, your information is on all these different tabs, and it looks like you're all different departments. How can I get all the information in one place? So that's what we did, is we, we were suggested to go to City of Seattle's website and look at that and redesign ours similarly to theirs. So what we did is exactly that. Um, we made it simple and clear and used common terminologies so everyone can understand it. So what we did is we broke it down into three sections. There's a section for customers who have done work in Redmond a hundred times and just need the forms and the information and not the detailed descriptions of how to do the process. We broke it to a section where um, customers who've never done work in Redmond and need to know every step of everything including how long everything will take and the cost of things um, and it gives you very detailed information it's like a book reading through it and then the third section is a tools resource in case you don't know how to find something you're looking for it gives you all the codes all the information for any development in the process and what I like the best about it is all of the divisions the nine divisions that Kurt talks about are all in one place so it doesn't say for fire information, go to this section. For building or civil, go to this section. We're all together in one list and it clearly shows what each group does, but it's not divided out like we were before. So it includes us into one development services center. Mr. Stillen. So y you call this getting a permit and I seem to recall when I went for a permit, it's more than one permit. So when you say getting a permit, this is really get somebody getting a set of permits, so it's your grading permit, your you know your side sewer permit, your building permit. Your is that what we're talking about? Is more like getting all your permits in one process? It's all and then some. Okay. So so um, your project was a smaller project, but it includes everything from a large big project to someone building a simple deck or um, installing a hot water heater. Um, it goes from that range. That's as complicated as a new commercial building being built out of the ground and subdividing a lot down to buying a hot water heater. But it, it steps them through getting, like the, if, if somebody needs a package, it's, it, they get their whole mm -hmm. package. Mm -hmm. Great, okay, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Are you counting the questions? Yeah, so it goes both angles. Mr. Flynn. Well, I just wanna compliment you on, on that, how you put together the, the website because to me, it now is designed based upon a customer or customer's perspective, right, of how they're going to come to us and do business. It's not, like you said before, it's like fire, we're going to put the fire stuff over here, we're going to put the development stuff over here. So this is great. I, I really appreciate that. That will help a lot. 
I think too often organizations do that first thing. They, they see it from their own internal perspectives. Well, and when we did the testing on it and the review of it, we had people who didn't do development services. So people from other departments review it for edits to make sure we're using common language that everybody understands instead of jargon. So that was one of our big things we wanted to catch too. It's easy to get involved in the jargon. <clears throat> Mr. Carson. So I realize a lot, of, a lot of these folks are frequent flyers. They've been, been there, done that with development services and, but <clears throat> How, how user friendly is the process for the one offs, the, the people who are, you know, acting as their own contractor uh, or general contractor? And um, how much during, through the process or at the beginning of the process are things like incentives and exceptions, like how they would go about those? Because it seems like, at least from, um, from some that I've talked to that a lot of those are not outlined very well and they don't know when they can ask for what and so how, how, how does that work? Yeah, I, I would ask you to look at the website. It's live. They pushed it live on Friday, October 10th. Um, so if you are interested, say, in a residential new, it walks you through the process. It tells you how long it should take. It tells you what other permits you might need in the process. It tells you if you're interested in green building, what kind of incentives you can get. It gives you flyers and tip sheets. It gives you information about frontage improvements if you're an infill lot or if you're an existing lot and doing demolition. It links you to those pages. Um, the pages are pretty in depth and I think we keep adding to them as we get feedback from people. And so I, I would encourage every one of you to look through them. We worked really hard on the first time customer pages. Um, you have to scroll down. It's, it's not a summary. It's how do I get one? How long does it take? What kinds of fees does it cost? Is there anything else I need to know that go with it, with including tip sheets and explanations of if I've never built a house before, how do I do this? I think just one other, one other thing about that as we've talked. The, a really big part of, of the whole lean process is the implementation, I feel. And so this, so we've really focused on that and, and the things that Carol's talking about, getting them live, getting them going. So we're probably gonna find, I mean, to answer your question, there's probably gonna be parts of this that aren't quite right and we're, we're not walking away from this process. We're not saying it's done. We're saying we're six, seven months into it. I think we've made a lot of great progress. I think there's still work to do. So we're hoping to get, we're hoping to continue this, this model of getting uh, customer input through the process. We're hoping to continue to get that, and I think the the best way, rather than than going months or years to make this the perfect system before we put it out there, we're putting it out there. We think it's right, and we're yeah. hoping that people will set us straight if it's not. Right. Well, there's a. I met with a, a resident who is building a new house, and I'm, I'm sure he wishes that this had been in place when he started the process because. He thinks it's taking a lot longer than it should, and and things are not really clear or weren't really laid out for him in the way that he would have hoped. So, I look point one other thing too, and that is that the the scope of the website redesign wasn't limited to the narrow scope of the lean process. Right, we're looking at a very specific permit process and how does that work. The staff was so enthusiastic about this, and it was such an obvious need both for internal staff and the external customers that it's the whole thing. It's the entire development services tab of the old website has been torn apart and rebuilt in a very, I, I think a very customer driven, customer centric model. Um, and it is so much better. Staff is kind of freaking out about a little bit because it got pushed live real quick. But once they look at it, they go, aha. You know, because it was very much from the staff's perspective before, but staff had a hard time finding it. It's a pretty, pretty cool website and I think it's gonna be a really successful thing once we get used to it but we're two days into it so mr. Myers thank you um, first question is uh, we start with 1253 steps how many do we have now and what is it what is the goal how about if I take that okay Scope of this project was 
exterio, extraordinarily ambitious. Um, the value is you got to see the whole process from beginning to end. And that is the way the customer experiences it. Um, the value of actually calculating all of the steps and doing it as a reduction of it overall um, was not the same. So as Kurt described the Pareto principle, it made more sense to zero in on the four areas for improvement and fix things instead of um, uh, sort of belaboring the process of the steps, because once they got a look at the whole thing, it, it wasn't a process they wanted to repeat. So it wasn't really as much value to count those steps and then recount the steps from beginning to end, rather to work on those four sections, which were like, these are our trouble points. So for permits to go from 17 weeks, cutting out 11 weeks, we focused on lead time. Because the customer, yes, the steps were adding to confusion, but from the customer's point of view, it's you know the day I show up and then the day you give me an answer. That's my beginning and end point. That's what I want you to measure. That's the result we should be tracking. And so when you look at the results the team is showing you, and they're showing you better than 50% improvement in those areas, we're counting the measures that matter to the folks, even though I really wanted to count the steps. So we don't know. Correct. OK. Um, the second observation I made was something I complained about when I was in high school, my kids complained about when they were in high school, and judging from the TEDx Redmond group I worked with last weekend, they still complain about, and that is all of their teachers only thought about their own homework assignments, and over the weekend you had to deal with nine teachers, and each one was on, so I'm, I'm glad to see there's at least some recognition that other teachers exist in the world. <laughs> but I hope the irony isn't lost that the, pro the lean process of speeding up and simplifying our process has turned out to be incredibly complex and time consuming. And, and I, I have a, a similar situation with David. My, one of my prospective new neighbors is deciding whether he wants to uh, move into a lot that is next to us, but he has been given such a huge list of things that he has to consider and not much guidance on how to do it that he may just throw his hands up and go someplace else. So this is a problem that wasn't since the recession and wasn't since one Redmond. It was the chamber before, and if you looked at your video, the members you saw in the run one Redmond group used to be called the Government Affairs Committee of the Chamber of Commerce. So I'm, I'm glad to see there's some attention being paid to it now. I'm a little frustrated that it hasn't uh, been more comprehensive and, and quicker, but let's hope that it gets that way. Just for staff, I thoroughly disagree with that. <laughs> um, I th any, any government process that is improved in six months by 50% is phenomenal. And I'm very proud of what you've done. Um, we, as Clarissa said, Commercial permits is a big chunk to bite off. We haven't bitten off residential permits. We haven't done anything on those. So um, to compare residential permits to what we've done here is, is uh, illogical. Um, but I, I want staff to know that you've done a great job, and I know you'll continue to do a great job. I liked, I'd like to chime in on that, too. I, I know I walked up there the morning you guys are doing that. And I just, I, I mean, that's why I've asked you about the process. I mean, I used to tell people what I think about the bicycle shop theory that you really work together better when the guy who's out selling the bicycle works with the guy that's assembling the bicycle, with the person that's buying the parts, with the person that's doing the accounting, and you all understand why somebody wants this report because they use this data to make sure that when you want to sell the bike, the right one's in the shop, and you got to work together. And that's why I want to understand if, like, now you have people that understand, like, when fire comes in and says, I need this, you understand why, and you, you can work together and make a better process. And that's one thing I saw this is really good integration across the departments. And that's where I think we're, we're going to see the benefits here of people working closer together, being able to collaborate, find things. So I, I'm to I, I second that. I'm just really totally impressed. And, I, and, you know, maybe it's not the pace we want, but it's in, headed in the right direction. And I can only see this accelerating because 
um, I, I can see on your faces you're pretty happy about what you're doing. And I think that's what's infectious and really grows in an organization and makes people really want to work someplace. And so I, I see it accelerating and, and so I'll second what the mayor says too. Ditto, moving on. Okay, um, the fee calculator is one of the pieces of the transparency that we worked on for the website. So this is what we heard from the one Redmond representatives is that they needed to know at the beginning of their process, not during the process or at the end of the process, if there were fees involved with their development. So we worked really hard as a group of nine different divisions to get all the fees in one location for a project, a commercial project from beginning to end. And so that's what we did. Um, we made it a user tool so you, um, applicants can go to our website, open up this tool, enter data in and save it and keep it or change it as they go through the process. <laughs> So currently, or before the website was launched, they were calling seven different departments and divisions trying to ask for fees. And as you know, if you ask a question differently, you get a different answer. And if they didn't know to call one person, you don't know what you don't know, so then you're missing some fees, right? So what we did is we put all the information in one place where you can see the list of all of the fees of all the permits on a standard multifamily or commercial permit and how to get them and how the fees actually calculate. And it shows you an estimate at the end. It includes um, everything from site plan entitlement, the first land use process, to impact fees, which everybody always wants to know, what are my impact fees gonna be? To every trade permit, including electrical, mechanical, fire, water, sewer, every, uh, every one of the trade permits. So this is a very valuable tool that several customers wanted to have. It's also available on our website for you guys to look at and test if you want to. So increased staff collaboration is what Mr. is what John was talking about. Um, so we had nine divisions working together in that room, but what um, Hank was talking about is it did take a while to get results. And the reason it took a while is because we all had to work collaboratively together to improve the process, understand what one person's regulation could do to change another person's requirements or make the project not work or work. And so what we learned together is how to work better and take down the silos before we were requiring things in our little box. Um, fire requires a certain thing or building requires a certain thing. And we didn't really coordinate and talk to each other about what does that do to the civil review and approval or what does that do to other processes during this development. So at this point, what we did is we moved the review team to the beginning. So everyone who's involved in a land use project, a new commercial, starts at the beginning of the process through the prep process and continues through that process together as a team all the way to the end. So that way we know how to work together and we know what things we're asking for can affect other departments or divisions throughout that process. This is, um, the goal of that is to um, not surprise people we kept hearing that we don't want a surprise halfway through the development phase. You know, you, you can't show up in the middle of it and say, oh, you have to do something totally different. And so that alleviates some of the, well, the surprises for applicants. So that was part of our goal. We also did a lot, um, some staff training, and we're gonna continue to do staff training, training and we're doing it interdepartmentally. So we're not training just fire or just building or just civil. We're training everyone at the same time on the whole process. So that way everybody's learning the same things together. So we're really breaking those barriers and working together as a group and using the tools that we're given. So then it comes down to what do the improvements really lead to? So the improvements really are leading to a flexible, predictive, and clarifying process that the applicants and one Redmond told us they needed. And it also gives us some flexibility within the process to help them design those specific lots or unusual circumstances that we're dealing with in Redmond, especially in the downtown zone now. So I'm gonna have Rich talk about customer feedback. So customer feedback, um, I, I think Kurt said it well, and it was kind of recapping what the chief stated. Uh, 
we had a, a pretty frank letter from Wen Redmond, which I think was kind of the the spark that kind of lit this whole thing off, which was a good thing. It coincided with the mayor had, you know, attending the presentation on, on lean and, and saying that might work. And you know the, the the sponsors of the organization coming back and saying we need to do something that status quo is not working. The first step of that is really to define the solution or define the problem before you define the solution. And that was all about the customer. So the customer feedback on the current process, our proposed solutions, and then how are we doing? So the customer feedback, what we're hearing is, is been very positive. Uh, you know, as a general process, as a general um, way to come come towards solving the problem has been very encouraging. Um, some of the customers we talked about at the beginning of the process when we told them what we want to do, we're going to bite off this commercial development process from, you know, hey, I think I want to build a building all the way to good luck with your business. They said, you're crazy. That thing's a huge process. You're never going to get it done. And they kind of sat there with their arms crossed. We got to the end of the process and they're going, wow, you came up with the solutions, you came up with work plans, you implemented the solutions and these things are live and we're going forward and we're, we've got projects that are currently in the design process and in the pipeline that have started going through the pilot process and we're implementing that and people are very happy with it. It's not without bugs, not without improvements, but the staff is saying, that's not a stumbling block, it's a chance for improvement, we're gonna keep making this thing better as we go along, but the initial response that we're hearing back from the customer is very positive within the scope of that we're doing. Now, last quote on the, on the slide there is, uh, it is just the beginning, because obviously we see the success in this one and what the next thing people wanna do is, let's do every one. Well, we haven't increased staff, we haven't, you know, we're still seeing an increase in building permits, it's gonna take time, but staff is committed to, to continuing on with this. So, we're, uh, we're, we fixed four things, that gives us a four out of 23, we got like 19 things more that we know we need to fix in this one process, right? So the team experience overall, um, as Kurt mentioned, it was 12 folks, 12 worker bees in the, in the organization, kind of a lowest level, right? Boots on the ground kind of positions that were empowered to come together and say, you know the work, you know the process, you've been frustrated with things that don't work, things that get lost, things that get tied up, do it better. We're gonna empower you, the, the, the uh, sponsors took a turn around and said, let's make it better. None of us had like open calendars and free weeks to hang out and do this, but we said, fine, let's roll up our sleeves. They locked us in the door for a full week, no cell phones, no email, let's do it. Huge process, huge eye opener, and, and a huge, I think, um, opportunity for staff to, to understand and respect each other as professionals and understand the roles that we all play within the process from the beginning all the way to the very end. Building inspection is every bit as important as land use. Building requirements are every bit as important as the, the sewer engineering piece. It's all important, right? We can't skimp anywhere. So if we can't remove the quality piece, what can we remove? And that's what we identified in, that, in those 1,200 steps and the four pain points. So I think it was a very um, seven months from let's sit in a room together and let's get it done is kind of a great example for the city is the first big lean project that we've done, right? The HPO and the, all this kind of, this is the proof of the pudding. It's out there, we're done. This is fantastic. Um, there are a lot of people looking at that and there's a lot of people that are using that now, the tools that we learned in that week back in our own work groups, right? We're a division, we're a department, development services division, right? but we still have individual responsibilities within that, within those roles. And we're taking those tools that we learn and we're applying those into our stuff. So citywide benefits, it's exactly that. Um, the staff has taken these things back. They're empowered. They see a framework, they see a process, they've heard about it, they've learned about it. They've seen it done. I can talk to everyone in my group or everyone in building or planning and say, it works. Here's how you do it, map the steps. Yes, it's a hard process. Yes, that takes time. But if you can't define the problem, you can't identify a solution, right? Do it. Um, in, my, in my particular work group, the day I went into the lean room, I got promoted and put in a new section of the division. I got out of that, and the next Monday we sat down and said, we gotta streamline our process. We've taken a ton of waste out of the ongoing annual fire life safety inspection program in the pre and post intergov processes and the inspection and billing process. 
we we're just now rolling that out at the same time. So, yeah, we did one process. I know uh, building has been doing some processes uh, over the counter permits. We're, they're looking at expedited permits, building permits later this uh, month. Uh, accounts receivable is doing a big initiative right now. HR is doing a big initiative right now in the hiring and onboarding process. Uh, this thing is growing. Uh, you, you, I think you said it, Mr. Stillen, that there, there's a certain excitement in the staff of saying, we don't have to put up with this frustration, with this waste. We can be empowered to do something better. And I, I think it really is contagious. And it's, it is only going to continue to grow. So, Larissa. I, uh, I want to express my thanks because it's been a great privilege uh, to witness what these people, these very earnest people um, who work hard every day. It's, you don't have a problem with people who don't know what they're doing or don't want to work hard. That's not the issue here. They're trapped in systems that are um, redundant and sort of force them down these rabbit holes that are, are non-productive. Um, I also want to express my thanks to, um, to the folks at One Redmond. Uh, Bart Phillips is here and uh, also Jeremy who was an, uh, uh, an addition to their staff for the summer who really contributed uh, a lot to our efforts. There are, um, I'm going to hand out three packets on this end and three on this end as well. Um, Council Member Allen had requested, hey, you know, if this turns out good, <laughs> I love that, if this turns out good, can you help us tell the story? <laughs> Uh, it, you know, there was a risk. There was a risk that you would not be able to have measurable results coming out of this because you didn't know. You didn't know what you didn't know until you went in to look at it. So um, this packet includes a, a one-pager. Um, you saw the short video that was produced. Thank you for taking the time to listen to the details of the process. The fact that the staff themselves want to come here and describe the level of detail is a reflection of the earnestness of the work and the thoroughness of the work, which, frankly, you don't get results like 50% percent improvement with shortcuts. You have to go all the way down to this level of detail to get that kind of uh, improvement and to be able to sustain it. Um, the, I was re reflecting on the video and thinking about how well the staff now describes the voice of the customer and how fundamental a shift that was. And thank you for your acknowledgments about the website uh, and when the process stops and starts for the customer. When we first started talking about this, I said, do you know what your customers want? Oh, yeah, mm, right? Most of the staff were very easily able to describe the complaints that the customers had. Less articulate on what the customers really wanted and how they would define value. So. In that case, you're always kind of chasing the complaint or the one-off and never really attending to what is really valuable to the customer and focusing on that. That becomes your guiding principle and then you start shaving away the other stuff that doesn't add to that. That's the only way to do it. Otherwise, you're just guessing and making stuff up and trying to make it better without any, um, any legitimate reason to believe that that will improve the results. Um, I have been walking around. Uh, everybody knows I take a lot of pictures. I take pictures of staff. I take pictures of Kanban boards. I take pictures of results. It's all about show me. Um, we ha you have to see those results. And um, there, are, it's going on everywhere. <laughs> so even on things that aren't, aren't officially sanctioned improvement projects, people are taking the tools and applying them. I remember walking by one room and, and I noticed there was a lot of colored stickies on the wall. I said, what's going on in here? Oh my gosh, we're redesigning the above and below ground storage tank hazardous removal process. <laughs> and they were just going to town, which really says a lot about the utility of the tools and the sincerity of the sponsors who are, you know, you talk a lot about empowerment, it's kind of a bumper sticker. But when you see people really picking it up and saying, we don't have to wait for the crazy lady from the UW to show up, we can actually start fixing these things ourselves. Uh, and we're doing it in a way that's bringing the departments together and it's evidence-based rather than just, hey, I got an idea. Uh, and they're focusing and listening to their customers. It's, um, as I said, it's a privilege to witness. So as, it, it, as the propensity to try and do more and take on more goes, I have been sort of the, um, the school marm on ensuring that we complete this process. Okay, so even at this point, even with as much progress, this 50% improvement and implementation, not just like, I know, how about we re redesign our website? Uh, that, that work has actually been completed within this time frame, which 
in, a, in another environment, I have seen this website redevelopment process take two years or more. And you guys had that website live two weeks ahead of time. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's pretty incredible. Uh, but completing the prototype implementation for p commercial permits and then for other permits is something that still requires attention. Uh, and then, as Rich mentioned, uh, accounts payable is undergoing a, a process and the human resources hiring process launches uh, on October 27th. Um, in addition to that, there's uh, uh, attention being given to mm, being deliberate about handing off the tools so people can do it themselves. So the question arose, and it's a very good question, how do we sustain these improvements? How do we not make this a one-off, like while you were here and while you were looking at it, it was good, and then, I don't know, what happened? I thought we were going to do a great job and customer service forever is awesome. You know, where did our measurable results go? So um, the city has committed to not just Lean 101, but Lean 201. Uh, and a, a persistent and deliberate um, transformation of the culture that will continue to support the ability to listen to your customer in a way that you can translate it into system requirements that turn into results down the line rather than just, I listened and I smiled and I wished I could help you because I was like, I don't know what to do. So um, it's been a really uh, a fundamental and important transformation and I appreciate the opportunity to be part of it. Thank you very much. That's, it. That's your swag. That, that, That's that, all that, I got. This is our swag. <laughs> we have our handouts, <laughs> and I've been on the web page. It's actually pretty cool. Um, so it's nice, nice work. Any any, any last comments? Uh, just Mr. a Flynn? great job, and um, I think that as we've done similar things to this at my employer, and and the challenge I think is the implementation, and having that 120 day window is uh, is great to have that to follow through. Uh, there's different models at this, but implementation is so crucial. And I think spending that week just tearing it down and finding out what's there and then figuring out what the pain points are is a great process. So uh, keep, keep up the good work. Um, one thing I might ask for in, in this is like how this ties into all our, also our comp plan, kind of our vision <coughs> mission of the city and how we're you know, making those improvements there. But that's the only thing I would offer. <coughs> keep up the fine work. <coughs> Mr. Carson. Okay. So I was just going to ask real quick: is is this something the 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 lean 201 and 101 are those things that council might be able to audit? Uh, you know, we're not going to be obviously doing staff work, but I think I wonder if it might not be applicable to the job that we have to do. To I mean, we have to go through these processes periodically to you know redo the comp plan and. You know, is is this set of skills maybe applicable to what what we have to do in in some way? And maybe the mayor can. I want to make sure I understand your question. Are you asking can we lean out the um, comp plan review? Is that what you're well, asking? Well, uh, no, I'm just talking generally. Is it is this something that that you know <laughs> the, the a council member could come and. Um, understand how the the lean process works and just to translate audit the class means I come but I don't have to take the test <laughs> right, right. Um, right. right. <laughs> correct so there will be more trainings offered and um, if there's something that's uh, of interest I would just it's just a matter of scheduling and letting you know when they are right um, you might want to have a, another conversation about what you really want out of it the question sure. about whether council is willing to lean their own work um, is, is a very profound one and one I'd, I'd be happy to hear more about. Mr. Stillen. So I, I just wanted to touch on what was attributed to Chief Smith and I think it's similar to something I used to say and I know it's really tough to do when a customer's in your face telling you you're doing something wrong but I always had this idea when I was in product development when a customer complained about something if you could just and it was tough for me to do this, but if you could just back off, you realize what they were telling you about was a new product opportunity, a new service opportunity. So I commend you if you, you can take that heat, step back, and then realize that that's a new opportunity. So I, I, I applaud you, Chief Smith, for bringing that up to people. And once again, I just want to applaud you on what you're doing. Uh, you know, I, I haven't heard that residential permits are coming next, and uh, <laughs> uh, I just want to thank you for that. And, just be tough when they complain about something because I, I think they really are asking for more help and we'll do it. 
So just to clarifying, it's expedited tenant improvements is the one that I promise next. Okay. <laughs> so just, just to be clarifying, I told him I couldn't start until the end of October in hopes that that's when we'll have a little bit of a lull in our really high demand of, I need the permit before wet weather season, so I need it now. So that's, that's what we're working on next. Okay. Well, I'll just wrap this up by saying thank you very much. It was a fantastic presentation to a process that has significantly improved. And we will reap the benefits going forward. Thank you.